Y'all, this crock pot recipe that I have on back here, I literally cannot wait. It already smells so good. And as soon as I saw this recipe, I was like, I absolutely have to make this and like try it for myself because it reminds me so much of that chicken and rice casserole that you guys know is like a favorite for me. It is so, so good. And it's kind of the same concept, same flavor profile. So I cannot wait. I put it on earlier this morning. So I'm going to take you back to this morning and show you what all goes in here. Okay. So I've got some of our ingredients over here, but honestly, this is what I'm like most excited about. And I feel like this is going to be the star of the show. This brand actually has a couple different flavors of rice, but the recipe that I saw the girl use this creamy chicken. So that's the one I got, but I bet any of the flavors would honestly be really good. But first things first, I'm going to go ahead and spray this down really nice. Okay, then we're just gonna dump this in, seasoning and all. She did two bags, so I'm gonna do two bags. It's actually really early in the morning right now. I'm making this in hopes that Monkey and I can have it for lunch. And I just feel like this will be a great, like, leftover. It's like a good almost meal prep for the week for us to have for easy lunches. And then next we're gonna go in with one can of cream of chicken soup. I have the kind with herbs just because I feel like it gives it a little bit more flavor. And then we'll use our can to actually measure out our chicken broth as well. If y'all don't know what um, chicken and rice casserole recipe I'm talking about, I'll link it down below for y'all because if you have not tried that, you have to. It is like literally one of my very fa favorite like top five recipes. Um, and this just reminded me of that so much. Okay, so like I said, I'm using my can, adding in my chicken broth. She did like a can and a half, so that's what I'm gonna do. I couldn't find any measurements, so hopefully I'm measuring all of this correctly. You know what? I only have a tiny bit left. I'm just gonna use it all. I think that'll be just fine. Okay, I'm gonna mix this together just a little bit. Okay, now to this, if you wanted to like slice up some onions and add that in, you absolutely can. I'm not going to, but I am gonna use a little bit of onion powder to season our chicken. And then I left my chicken in the fridge overnight so that it would thaw, but it's still a little bit frozen, so I just put it in this water first thing this morning. It's still a little frozen in the center, but I think it'll just take a little bit longer in the crock pot to cook. So now to season my chicken, I'm gonna do some smoked paprika, of course, a little bit of this cracked pepper parmesan, some onion powder, garlic powder, and then black pepper. Okay, that is it. It already looks and smells so good. I'm gonna pop a lid on this and then we'll let it cook on high for about four hours. Mine might take like four and a half, five, just cause my chicken is not all the way thawed but I cannot wait for this recipe so it's been about two hours right now and I'll give you a peek it already is just looking so good I wanted to check in on it let me turn you up so you can see it I wanted to check in and see if it needed any more um, chicken broth since I didn't really have like exact measurements I can tell that rice is getting nice and soft um, okay, I already put the lid back on and it's falling up so you can't really see it. But I just want to tell you, I probably only added like a quarter cup more um, of this chicken broth just to make sure that that rice doesn't get like dry while the chicken finishes cooking. All right, the moment I have been waiting for all morning long because this has smelled up our house and y'all, I just cannot even tell you. Like, it looks so good. Mm. There is some extra juice in here, but every time I like swivel it around, it like absorbs back it in. It just absorbs right back in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like I cannot. And the chicken just is like, so tender. Get that plate ready. I got it right here. Y'all. I want all this rice. Okay. <laughs> I feel like it even looks like that rice and chicken casserole that I love. Okay. Here is a close up. Show them how like tender the chicken is. Well, let me just just take a bite. Just have a bite, and I'll tell you how okay. tender that chicken is. That was scalding hot, wasn't it? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Good. I put it on warm like thirty minutes ago. Whoa, that look how it just like is, falls apart. Yeah, that chicken is really good. 
There are so many good flavors going on in this. That rice packet, I feel like was yes gold. Oh my gosh. It's like creamy. Mm-hmm. That is exceptional. Ooh, I cannot wait to try it. I'm, 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 I'm shocked at how flavorful this is just from those little uh, packets. That well, that rice there. packet had a bunch of like seasonings in there. Yeah. Does okay. it taste like the chicken rice casserole a little bit? Oh, it definitely does, but it's um, it's got like a little bit more, I think, like er herbal undertones to it. Yeah. Is that would that be accurate? Yeah. And this chicken, funky. The chicken itself is so so tender and good. Okay, let me taste it. Let me taste I'm it, funky. All of it. <laughs> the whole crock pot. <laughs> What's the word? What's the word? Wow. I always love smoked paprika, so uh, I definitely say use that whenever you like season your chicken. Mm -hmm. I thought there was paprika on there, mm -hmm. but the creaminess—it almost has like a cheese texture, like a creamy cheesy, but it's like not cheese. Yeah, of the rice is I, insane. I feel like um, the the rice like transformed into a risotto type of thing. That is the <laughs> best way to describe uh -huh, it. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's like you basically have wonderful risotto yes. with that really good chicken. This is by far one of my very favorite crock pot recipes that we've made in a long time. Yeah. Like this is up there with like the best and it was such an easy recipe. Like this is one of those go-tos that you just like know off the top of your head that you can throw in the crock pot whenever you're like in a hurry. So would you go with this or Mississippi chicken oh. or... Mr. Duke is my favorite of all time. But I have to say, of all the crock pot recipes I've ever made, uh huh. This one, the um, pepper belly peat, that one that I got from TikTok. Yeah. That's like my second favorite. And then this one. This is scrumptious. Like, cannot recommend enough. So, definitely make this one. Before we jump into this next recipe, I do want to say a big thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. It is no secret to y'all how much we truly love receiving our ButcherBox subscription. We have been probably getting it for, I want to say like two years now. It's been quite a while and y'all, I love it. And I feel like especially now more than ever, I cannot tell you how many times I've went to the grocery store and I cannot find the meat that I am looking for on the shelf. And it makes me just even more grateful for our Butcher Box subscription. The value, the quality, it is so wonderful. So let me tell you a little bit more about them. Butcher Box delivers high quality meat that you can trust right to your doorstep. Their beef is grass fed and grass finished. Their pork is raised crate free. Their chicken is free range and organic. And their seafood is wild caught. We love the value you that ButcherBox brings with not only the price but also the quality and the peace of mind. ButcherBox has two box options to choose from. There is the custom and then also the curated box. We typically choose the custom because we like to be able to pick which meats we're going to receive each month and even with their least expensive box option you can make up to 24 meals and that means that you can have a home-cooked meal with your family every Monday through Friday for an entire month and then some. Within the curated box and the custom box, you have two options. So you can do the classic or the big box. If you have a larger family, the big box might be better for you. The classic offers five cuts of meat and it's about eight to 11 pounds of meat equaling 24 meals and it's $146 per box. The big box has 10 cuts of meat, it's 48 meals, and it's 269. With a custom, which is what we do, the classic box has six cuts, it's nine to 14 pounds of meat, and it equals 30 meals, and then the big box is 12 cuts of meat, which equals 60 meals. Now let's talk about quality and peace of mind. Butcher Box sources meat and seafood from partners who are dedicated to doing the right thing, and they meet the highest standards of quality. I know meat claims can be really confusing to understand, but thanks to ButcherBox, I know exactly what I'm getting each time. The team at ButcherBox is dedicated to believing in better, and this means treating our planet with respect. It means caring about the lives of animals and the livelihoods of farmers. They partner with people dedicated to doing the right thing, never cutting corners, and always looking for ways to improve. 
I am so excited for you to try ButcherBox. And if you have ever thought about it, now is the time. So be sure you click the link down below and claim this month's ButcherBox limited time offer plus free shipping. Y'all, I'm telling you, like watching Instagram and TikTok will make you hungry. I am constantly like seeing and finding so many new recipes on there. So I kept seeing this one on TikTok over and over. It like went viral. And every time I watch this recipe, I'm like, I have got to try this because it just seems like out of this world scrumptious. So we're making the viral like Alfredo spaghetti bake where you mix the two together. Now, of course you can make um, your own Alfredo sauce or you can use a jar. I'm gonna eat my own just because I love my Alfredo, but then I'll just use jarred spaghetti sauce. You can also like chop up green bell pepper and onion and saute that with your hamburger meat. You know, I don't really love that, so I'm not going to, but I guarantee that would give it so much, even like more flavor. Okay, so I've got my pot of water. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to a boil so that we can get our noodles cooking. And then next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my ground beef cooking. And you're basically just making like regular spaghetti. I think I will add in some of the blend to this meat while it cooks. Now, while my meat finishes cooking, I have my little saucepan over here. I'm gonna go ahead and make my Alfredo. I know y'all have seen me make this tons of times, so I won't make you sit through all of it. If you have not seen it, I will try and find a video that has the recipe, and I'll link it down below for you. But I have to tell you, I don't want to toot on horn, <laughs> but my Alfredo has the best flavor. It's so good. I know it's like some crazy ingredients, but I'm telling you, it is is delicious so i'm gonna go ahead and get that cooking over here the old bunky is not like quite off work yet he's still on a call and i'm like hang on i gotta get my pasta in there i gotta finish doing this my ground beef is done i got too many things going at one time over here for one person so if i can hang out there for a second i'm gonna go ahead and add my noodles and then finish making our alfredo and y'all i never know do you salt the water after you bring it to the boil or before. That is like one thing that has always like confused me. And then I'm just gonna use spaghetti noodles, but if you wanna do fettuccine, just use whatever your family prefers. I'll tell you something else that I love about Butcher Box is that the meat is always so lean and I did not have to like drain off any excess grease or anything. So um, to this, I'm gonna just add in my jar of spaghetti sauce. We'll mix this and just let it kind of sit and stay warm while we finish the Alfredo. Now that I have everything uh, semi-situated, Bunky came down to check on things. Yeah. <laughs> but he has one more call, so I gotta finish everything by myself. I'm saying it looks like you got everything under control down here, so. I just now got it under control. Yeah. I about broke the Parmesan jar, yeah. saved it with my kneecap. This is good, waiting for it to finish. Gotta add some more cheese to my Alfredo. All I can say is that this is gonna be a delicious dinner. All, all the components within? favorites of mine. Correct. I think it's going to be good. Yes. Okay, oven is preheating to 350. My noodles are drained. Our Alfredo sauce is absolutely perfect. Like this is the consistency we are looking for. I've taste tested. It's amazing. Hamburger meat and spaghetti sauce of course is done. So now we are just combining all of this. Now I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but I have to tell you guys that after we eat this, we may not be able to like eat spaghetti or Alfredo any other way because I truly cannot imagine like a more beautiful thing. Two things that are just so incredible mixed together. Is there anything better? <laughs> okay, so first we're gonna go down with our pasta and then we'll pour our Alfredo sauce right over top. This might be too much pasta for this baking dish. Y'all, why do I always have this problem? Should I put this in a nine by 13? I think I'm gonna put it in a nine by 13. I'm gonna spray it just a little bit too. Why do I do this every single time? I always wanna use a smaller one because these are so heavy to get out. But then 
I learned my lesson. Or you would think I would learn my lesson. Okay, we're gonna judge these around. Kind of get an even layer. Okay, I'm just mixing this Alfredo sauce into the noodles. Now, hamburger meat going in right on top. And then we're just gonna top this with mozzarella cheese. We're gonna bake it at 350 for like 15 minutes and then this will be done. Bunny better get off his call so he can come enjoy this deliciousness. Let's see this bad boy. Let's take a peek. Oh my gracious bunk. What in the world? <gasps> this looks marvelous. Bunky. Oh my goodness. This is like a dish full of love, okay? <laughs> That's a love dish. Wow. You could totally pop this under the broiler if you wanted your cheese to get like even more bubbly, but I kind of love it super melty like that. Yeah. It seems like one you don't want like, well, you may or may not, but like, the like crustiness on top, like yeah. you just want it to be smooth and creamy. Yes, dreamy. yes, yes, yes. Y'all, I just want to go swimming in this. Like, I could not even handle how good it looks. <laughs> now, I have to say that I've already had a bite, but I'm gonna let Bunky tell you his review and then I will tell you mine. I'm liking this texture so far. You just wait. You just wait, Bunky. Mmm. It took a second for the creaminess of the Alfredo flavor to come through. Uh-huh. But once it did. Yeah. But it's almost like you're like eating spaghetti and Alfredo together. It's wild, isn't it? It really is. I am shocked at this. It is crazy. It's like hard to describe because it's like a, a, the mixture of the two things, but it's like the best of both worlds. I literally, I cannot eat either separate. Like I love <laughs> the little bit of acidity, like the red sauce and the yeah. hamburger meat with the Alfredo. Yeah. It, it's almost a little bit more Alfredo-ish to me. Yeah. But that's also kind of like a good thing. Well, we also only had like three fourths of a jar of spaghetti sauce. Uh -huh. So we had a full jar. It might be like a little bit more. Yeah. Saucy. Yeah. This is fantastic. Like, th y there's really no other way to go at this point. I was shook. I would dare say it might be better than spaghetti pie. What? Yeah. It's true. Oh my god. It's true, y'all. I don't want to say that it is because that is like one of the best recipes you're, of all time. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But Bunky, I almost love it better than spaghetti pie. Yeah. I, I think they're different though. Yes. Like they are different. Like spaghetti pie to me is, it's kind of like lasagna, but you cheat. Right. Whereas this is more kind of like Alfredo with a spaghetti element to it. Different, but like crazy good. Yeah. So I just took another bite with that. I think what's, what's nice about it too, is that the, like the tomato sauce. Mm-hmm. You can catch a little bit of sweetness from the tomato, so it kind of balances out with the richness of the Alfredo. Yes. So they're working together, a great team. It's a wonderful harmony. Yeah, and you know what else I like about it too? What? When we eat the like Alfredo, we always make it with chicken. This yeah. is actually nice to kind of have the that's what I'm like saying. I love the, the beef with beef it. element to it, yeah. Okay, I just want to add on to what Bunky said. Like, exactly what he's saying, all of the flavors together, like, balance each other out so well. But when you get that bite of, like, creamy Alfredo with the hamburger meat, I, I cannot, I cannot explain it. All I'm telling you is you need to go to the store today, buy the ingredients, and make this. If you... Put one thing on your meal plan this week. It's this recipe, okay? 1,000% so delicious. Like, I cannot get enough of it. And pretty easy to make, especially if you use just like jarred Alfredo, jarred spaghetti sauce, 
very, very simple. But if you can make the Alfredo yourself, make it because I feel like that takes it over the top. Okay, so thank you for hanging out with us in the kitchen. I hope you love these recipes. I hope you try them. If you do, please tell me what you think. I like honestly cannot wait because both are just ridiculously good. Also, thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out that link down below and subscribe if you're new. Give this one a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, y'all.